Hey you guys, what's going on? It's your girl Kamarshi and you're tuning in to the very first episode of The Artist Sit Down. I am so excited to give you guys this very first podcast, this very first episode. The podcast in general, I just, I feel like I've been waiting to start it forever. I know you guys are like, wait, when is the podcast coming? I literally posted a clip of a promo. I think it was about, I think about like three, four weeks almost now. And I'm giving you guys the very first episode. So I'm really excited. It's going to be a dope series. It's going to be a dope season. And I'm going to have amazing artists, uh, entrepreneurs, and just people who are really into building their craft, a chance to come on this platform and be able to share what it is that they do and what they see their future to be within that career um, field. So... For today, I have a very special guest. He calls himself the man behind the scenes of your favorite song, and he's Alfred State's very own. Let's give a round of applause for Jay. How are you? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great, to be honest. Yeah? How about you? I'm doing amazing. Um, how do you feel about being on the show? Thank you. I yeah. love it. I oh love my gosh, it. thank you. Okay, so we're just going to start this episode off by first telling the audience where you're from. Um, and we could just start there and we'll, we'll go from there. So where are you from and introduce yourself. All right, so my name is Jay. I'm from the Bronx, uh, NYC, you feel me? I'm 3.7 Daily. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's really me, though. I, I like, I'm a, sound, I'm a sound engineer. I do a lot of, uh, like, like, like my bio, you feel me? I, I do everything behind the scenes, you feel me? Uh, I'm multi-talented kid. I'm just happy to be here, though. Thank you. Thank you for that. Of course. Of course. And so when you say you're a sound engineer and you're behind people's favorite songs, do you have any songs in general that, in particular, that you're working on at the moment or any sound engineer thing that um, you're into working with, like, artists that uh, you want to speak about? So I can't get out the source. Okay. <laughs> you know how that gets. You don't like, necessarily have to nah, say the name, yeah, but, I'm like, not. how's your experience going uh, with you know, working with artists, being a sound engineer. It's mind-blowing, I got a lot. It opens it? you up to a lot of the background. When you see the background, you see what goes into all of the work and all mm-hmm. the songs that you listen to every day, the songs you blast through your AirPods and walk in the class. Mm-hmm. It's a, it really gives you a different type of insight because you really understand it at that point. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I guess the next question I want to ask is, what is your hardest challenge with being a sound engineer or being into music and what is something that you actually appreciate within the craft so what is the hard part and what's the part that you actually appreciate when doing your job a hard part i'd probably say maybe just staying focused Mm -hmm. because you know well you don't know but i adhd i i be i'm a restless kid you might see me tapping my leg or doing Mm -hmm. random stuff i'm trying to keep myself calm keep myself focused you know Mm -hmm. So I stay motivated, I can do it. So I, I have no problem with staying focused, being motivated. So do you think that like puts you in like a position more where it's like you have to work a little bit harder to like yeah, uh, tend to certain things, that's especially true. yeah. And when it uh, comes to artists, how does that work? Like, is it kind of like sometimes you, you'll be working with them and like your mind will kind of go elsewhere for a yeah, moment? I zone out. Kind of I tend to zone out a lot. Okay. Out. Especially if I'm, if I, so normally when I'm going to the studio and I'm mm-hmm. in the city, I do, I have a computer back home. I have an iMac where I keep most of my files, mm-hmm. most of my stuff. Mm-hmm. I have a computer out here that I have newer stuff ish. Right. And then, but it's a backup software. It's backup everything. It's more, I'm brand new on there. Mm-hmm. But at home, my computer, I could, I know everything on there by heart, like back of my hand. So I could do something, bang it out in five minutes and then go to the studio and then. Just so no, yeah. Uh, so no, and it's not on purpose. It's really just I don't I don't see it until after it happens. So I zone out, and then I'm like, damn, I ain't gonna zone out on anyone. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, do you feel like it's necessarily a problem with though? Because I feel like I don't know it's not when it problem. comes to music. Like, I feel like it's moments where you do so. Now I know me personally as an artist, like I have moments where like I zone out, but I'm probably just zoning out to be like in a creative space, yeah. and then I click back in. I do that. I, 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 yeah, I, tend to do that. <laughs> I feel like you know, just as engineers and like artists or people like that genuinely has to listen to music and compose music together, it comes to a point where it's like you have to zone out for a little bit yeah. to kind of capture what that sound is supposed to sound like. 
and then come back to your body and be oh. like, okay, this is what I gained and what I picked up. It sounds so mystical. It sounds but crazy. It, it, <laughs> it's I, a real thing. It though. makes sense in the mind, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so you told us that you're from the Bronx, New York. Yeah. And how would you say the Bronx or just New York City music scene in general, um, you growing up listening to music, how do you feel like that played a role in your life? How it shaped you? How it shaped you listening to music? I mean, or hearing music? Uh, so growing up, I listened to a lot of 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. My mom was a Lil Wayne enthusiast. Yeah. So I've always had Lil Wayne. I've always been a Weezy fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Weezy. Everything he do. I listen to his new song, It Just Drop. I always listen to Weezy. What song was that? Uh, he dropped He Can't Nobody or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a DMX sample in the back. What? What? It's that sample in the back. And then it got Lil Wayne rapping over it. I feel like, like I know that song. He's coming back. He's I'm going I'm to show you after. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's just rapping. And he's like, Talking about how he's pro, how he's back. Like mm -hmm. he took his little hiatus, now he's back, and now he's on the tour. You mm -hmm. know what's so crazy? Little Wayne has. I feel like he's been a mogul for so many years, and it's he's crazy been a since he was sixteen. Since he was sixteen, <laughs> I feel like he literally came out of mogul. You know, there's people that I feel like come into like the rap game and the rap industry or whatever, and you know, it takes time for them to build their character, build their presence of like who they are, who they are, and I feel like. Lil Wayne definitely had that 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 stage of like him building and everything, but I feel like he kind of came in the game like killing shit off rip. And I feel like like he says, I, I've been watching a couple of his interviews, but he also said himself like even some of your greatest, you know, rappers think I'm the greatest. And so I think you know that says a lot about who he's built himself up to be. So it's kind of interesting to see um, the type of person he's going to be now. Um, when he steps back into the music business due to the fact that, you know, he's trying to make his role, he's making his uh, return back for his appearance. So I think that's going to be so dope. Um, so I don't know if you just have gone, how do you feel like that shaped you? Like, how do you feel like it shaped how you listen to music? Uh, so because my mom listened to a lot of Lil Wayne and Lil 50 Cent and Lil Kim, mm -hmm. it was more of a, I've always had a rap household. Mm -hmm. But then I've also had a household where Saturday, Sunday mornings, there's no school. Now we got Lauren Hill playing. Mm -hmm. We up mopping, we cleaning. Lauren Hill, some normal black parent household type thing. Love Lauren Hill. I love it. I, it brings you down to, I feel like music is vibrant. What's your favorite Lauren Hill song? Like, she used to listen to Lauren Hill when it was like, time to clean up. It's mm -hmm. like Sunday, get y'all. Get y'all asses up mm. and start cleaning. <laughs> and then it's like the thing playing in the background, the house one like pine soil, fabulous soil, soil, soil yep. and stuff. Burn it on and it's just oh, <laughs> and it's like burning on the pot on the stove. Yeah. So I love that. I love that so much. So when you hear music, right, what do you feel like? Um how do you feel? I guess we can talk about the Bronx. I wanna speak about the Bronx a lot because that's where you're born. Did you only reside in the Bronx? Uh so basically starting off I lived, I was born in South Carolina. Wow, uh, that's where that? most of my family is. That's most of my, the whole Davis family lives in mm -hmm. South Carolina. We got townhomes and it's all of that. So we got our own family home. We got our own land. Mm -hmm. So we be, <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Nah, but when we out there, it's such a, such a vibe. Like, Everyone really coming together because it's not the city. It's a mm -hmm. it's a southern. You got southern hospitality, mm -hmm. even though it's not that far southern. Mm -hmm. it's still southern hospitality. South it's Carolina there. is very southern. Not it is, it is but it's not. Southern. I feel like I feel like it's very southern, and it's because I also have family that live in the south, and my father is also from the south, and so I feel like the south personally for me, I feel like they're very southern, southern, and I think from New York City to the south that's is a, a complete different big, i feel like yeah. they're real raw yeah. they're real gutter like Every, a lot of stuff that goes on in the city a lot of the mm -hmm. a lot of the insults per se they, they would not don't take, fly anymore. yeah they don't it's because it's an open carry for the most part it's not hard to get away with having a gun out there it's open carry yeah, baby you do whatever anywhere they want. Near their home. Say the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay so being that you said that you have family that's from the south do you feel like, um, did you also listen to artists that grew up in the South? Because I know listening to artists from like different states, different mm -hmm. countries, I think also shapes your mindset of how you shape, how you listen to music. And just, I guess, on the fact of speaking about how you hear music, what is your general type of like, I guess, go to? I guess you could give me an example of like, who are your favorite artists that you listen to currently? Uh, Do you listen uh, and, and also genre? I got that. So... 
right now my favorite artist currently is Lil Baby. Okay. For sure. He like Love Lil Baby. Top one. I know. He he can't he can't really be messed with. Um in this generation at least. I listen to Lil Wayne every day. I listen to Kanye West every day. Contrary to what people say, Love he's Kanye. a great he's a great producer. He's a great artist. He's amazing. Pioneered musician. so much for hip hop mm-hmm. that I feel like you can't just walk over it because yeah. of his mental issues or whatever. You can't just walk over that. He's such an influential person. I feel like that's that's it's just not right to look over that it's, that way. It is. So I always listen to Kanye. Kanye, uh, not even the college dropout, but a lot of the, the little mixtapes he dropped. I don't know if I can, when I can find them, mm-hmm. throw it on on my TV, get ready for class. Mm-hmm. That's positive vibrational. Mm-hmm. Right when I'm walking to class, I might put on a little bit of, I, I play a little bit of Bronx drill here and there, but not as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. That's more of a, because I'm from the Bronx, it's a mm-hmm. it's normal thing to see. I hear it, I know the people. Mm-hmm. So I'm just listening to it, but when I'm really listening to it. I listen to Little Baby. Yeah, that's really my top three right there for real. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I love how they are icons from back when. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say, especially speaking on the fact that you are from the Bronx and drills actually um, a really big thing right now. I mean, in all boroughs, but I know the Bronx is definitely Bronx making a right lot now. of right noise. Now, how do you feel about the drill scene I and drill it. music <laughs> and just the people? I love it. How do, how do you feel about it? I love it, man. That feeling that you see when a lot of these people, I grew up with a lot of these rappers. Mm-hmm. K Flock, I ain't grew up that far from this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. You might hear the song named Shaw G's. He's from East Chester Gardens in the that. Bronx. Mm-hmm. That's two blocks from my from my house. I literally was playing basketball. I used to play basketball. Wow. I used to play sports with him. It's a lot of these rappers that I've been with in my in my in my life. I've known them already before mm-hmm. they was rapping. And then I come back. Now I see that they rapping and I'm doing my music then. Mm-hmm. Why not? It's on up. I got something for you. Let's work. Mm-hmm. So you would like pretty much like engineer a beat and stuff for them? Yeah, I've produced, I've produced, I've mixed, I've mastered, mm-hmm. I've engineered just on sound mixing. Mm-hmm. Uh I I song write uh occasionally. Mm-hmm. I have a couple different things on my So you're someone's ghostwriter. I'm not say. nobody's ghost well I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, I am. And you know what? It's a beautiful thing, but I love how you keep it very personal and you keep it secret and you keep it confidential. I think nowadays, you know, of course, it's good to take the credit and take credit for your work. However, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. NDAs can be yeah, involved. Nah, so, yeah. you know, that's the thing. So I guess being on the topic that we are on drill, because I feel like we're just going to touch a couple of, you know, just uh, different sectors of music. Where do you, how do you feel, one, about drill music? And I guess my follow-up question after that is, where do you see drill music going? That's a great question. That's and great question. I guess I wouldn't say to give you a time span, the next five years, at least five years. Mm-hmm. I can answer your first part of your question right now. Uh, I believe, I feel like I love drill. Mm-hmm. I love everything about it. I love the, the hi-hats to the kicks to the 80s. I love everything about it. I love the lyrics. It's gritty. Mm-hmm. The Bronx, we were just talking about this before this, we had, it's a real greediness in the Bronx. It right? is. And you can hear that when someone's really rapping, for example, I got, this is girl I know, Wawa. Her name is Wawa Too Sneaky on, on YouTube. So shout out songs, to Wawa Too Shout Sneaky. out to Wawa, shout out to my son Draco. Mm-hmm. Shout out to everyone from the block for real that make music that's really putting on. It's a lot that go behind it and you're not going to see it just listening to music, but you feel me? Right. It's a, it's a different love for it when you really see it. That's from your block, from your hood. Knowing them personally. Yeah, it makes it a whole different ballgame. An experience. Yeah. So do you feel like, because I know there is a lot of, especially controversies in the me- controversy in the media and the blogs about how drill music is, and I know it's a big thing, especially with like in New York City, with like the mayor, and they're thinking yeah. about banning it, I think it's what Supposedly, they're trying to say. Like, they tried. <laughs> but I guess being that you have experience with people who do make drill music and you, you do have personal relationships with them, how do you feel like it benefits them? Like, do you feel like it's something that it actually does benefit them to the point where it's like the conversation about banning it could really affect them, not necessarily financially, but more so in an in a, in a, in a emotional way um, with how they express themselves? I feel like because of, because people I know I talk to, are, these people that are pioneer drill to be right. honest like these wow. people that really came out not really pioneers already here but these people that made it lit mm-hmm. people that got the attention to it when you know i feel like it's it's 
it, it's gonna hurt though when it, if it, if it was to get banned, it'd hurt. But like, that's just a part. I feel like that's another part of life though. You gotta. That's just. I feel like that would be the sign to take it. Mature on. Trying. Yeah. Progress your 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 career to a different level. This is when you start. This is when you flip. A lot of the people I know just got signed to record labels recently, which I love. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah, let's give a round of applause for that. Because yeah. honestly, love that you know, drill music is actually getting recognition from going from being underground into now yeah. getting being able to go into labels and labels actually pushing that. I think, especially me being an independent artist, um, I feel like the business side of what. Of course, people who are like marketing themselves in the drill field, like if make really making it a business and um, forming their image around it. Like if a lot of people, which I've been seeing, like the really big ones, how they um, how they market themselves on like Instagram and how they put themselves out there. I love like how they how they do it. They keep themselves in like this light where it's like um, they show you like the real and the raw, like real street life. It's yeah. not necessarily perfection it's not none of that it's like what you see is what you get but then you also i know i see like a lot of uh drill rappers that also show like their accomplishments of like what they got and they don't have a problem like writing like little paragraphs or like um expressing their feelings and stuff which i think is dope i think um even there was one female drill um her name is murder b i I literally seen i seen a video of her um i think it was on my explore page and she was in like miami or something and like no she not not the beat up i did see it i did see it but not her fighting i um was actually going to speak about when uh a fan of hers walked by and he was like wait i'm ready to be and she's like yeah i'm ready to be and i thought that was so sweet because it's just like you know i'm saying to kind of see that sweet side of her because it flipped you know she's very like ah 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 but to see it's sort of like yeah i'm ready to be like you know like that's the part that's beautiful about it so I feel like the beautiful part is when you get to meet a lot of these people, they're not necessarily always so hard and angry like people perceive drill to just be. A lot of these people, like me keeping an honest buck with you, a lot of these people are the nicest people you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. Literally, the nicest people you'll ever see. You, they may, they demeanor or whatever may be a little rugged, it might be a little, but But if you want to, but everyone has that. You have to even live in the city. You live in the city. That's one thing about living in the city. You gotta have a tough face. You gotta have a, a tough demeanor, a persona that so <laughs> don't mess don't, with me. Don't fuck with I'm me. I'm him. Like you gotta have one of those. I ain't know you can curse on him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those that you gotta have. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people really do be so nice. Draco, that's my that's my friend. That's my childhood friend. I've grown up with him. Been in every step of the way that he's made music. I feel like. His music is real rugged. Mm-hmm. He's talking his shit. You feel me? What's his hottest song out right now? His hottest song out. I'd have to check on his page, mm-hmm. but I tell you a song I'm, I like the most. <laughs> What's <laughs> that song? Jacob Jacob song. Yo, Jago, he got. Well, I said Jago got this song called um. Damn, can't think. It's right here. I was into it earlier, bro. Mm-hmm. I don't want to feel. I don't want to mess up his his shot. I gotta mm-hmm. make sure I get this right. Get it right. It's really my. It's really <laughs> my right. man's roof. Um, it's my son Draco B. You can find him on SoundCloud, Apple Music, everything. Uh, he made this song called Dark Queen. This is the song. It's not released yet, but it's Dark Queen. It's Stay tuned for Dark verse. Queen coming soon. This is what I want y'all to tune in for, for real. Like it's it's a different level of him being like. He's progressed his music, and when you watched someone progress that much, it it's, it brings you a little happiness, like really inside of your heart. Like it's really like he made it, like he's doing his thing. Like I'm proud. That's how I feel. I like, that. I feel like everyone should be like that. You shouldn't be bitter that someone made it out. Exactly. So like everyone has their time to shine. It's all it's already made. It's already you just gotta wait. You gotta step into your light. You, you do have to step into your light, and I feel like you know a lot of people they. One thing I don't appreciate when it comes to a lot of people and when we see people getting success is, you know, people get success and a lot of people don't know the bullshit, like the hell that a person has to go through in order to, you know, break through and get in that point. However, I always like to say, like, once someone, you know, gets shine or in the door of success, always know that that blessing is always going to come right back to you. You just got to keep working. I feel like look at the next man's success as inspiration to keep on going because you see that he's coming from, you know, a place where you once were or you are. And so you take that and you, you know, 
you that should be your that, motivation. That should be push. your rug. That should be your, your little push behind you. That should be the battery in your back. And that's why a lot of the times I don't really, I can't really get busy with this whole like hate, selfish, yeah. jealousy thing. Okay. But to get back on the topic of Jay, <laughs> are you looking to work with any particular artists? Like, are you looking to work with artists? Like, what do you plan on doing for the future of building your sound engineering? Um, uh, portfolio like what are you looking to do uh, to so, contribute to music in the future so currently I'm working with Draco BR a song with Draco mm -hmm. uh, working on getting a song with Wawa Wawa wow, wow. tap in if you tap in please mm -hmm. you know come on please get it come <laughs> on <laughs> tap in the Wawa y'all not for real Wawa too sneaky that's on mm -hmm. YouTube tap in the hub listen to hear me out it's tough mm -hmm. you know what I mean um I'm really just trying to like, I'm really focusing on my degree right now. Okay. Tell the people what are you majoring in? I ain't even I'm related to music, but I'm in sports management right mm -hmm. now. Uh, and I'm, does that have to do with like a, a particular passion that you're going for? Yeah, it's something that you. I've always, since I was younger, I've always played football. Mm -hmm. I've been involved in football since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I just stopped playing football two years ago, basically. Um, what is your I, position? I played the whole the whole line, if you know what that is. The whole I don't. <laughs> tackle, guard, center. Nose guard, mm -hmm. three point. I mean, not three point, but three technique. I play everything. The crazy part is, you know, I find it so funny because when people explain sports to me, like they tell me all these positions and <laughs> all these things, like quarterbacks and the defense, and I'm just like, okay, you really gotta break down to me what the hell is what. I'm not saying you have to do this, nah, but okay. <laughs> I'm just like, what did like what do these people do? Every position got a different job, and it's art. That's how that's how I explain okay. sports. It's an art. Mm -hmm. Everything everyone has a job. Every 10, 12 people that's on that field or the whatever, mm -hmm. everyone has their own specific jobs that they're supposed to be doing. And when it's all done correctly, right. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. That's when it's done correctly, your coaches have done their job, your players have done your job. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. Like literally everyone everyone has their own job. Mm -hmm. Coaches gotta make sure they get they get those lesson plans or plays whatever into your head so when you were playing football what was your dominant like your dom i know you played off field but what were you, what was your dominant position dominant i was playing center uh, and what did they the ball. do that's so basically you get down you right in the middle of everyone okay you get down and you snap the ball to your legs to the mm -hmm. quarterback behind you okay. the quarterback he's going to throw the ball or whatever okay yeah. because and i know there's like there's certain I don't know if it's like defense or offense, but yeah, one of them is yeah. one of them is not supposed to run to the goal, the touchdown. Yeah. One one team's supposed to be getting there, the other team's supposed to be trying to no, push but away. No, I know. Yeah, so it's like one is the defense or the offense. One of them is supposed to like defense. Make sure you don't get no touchdowns. Yeah, make okay. sure you don't get into that zone. So they're blocking the people. Yeah, but the offense they run to the yeah. Those but are the defense can't run to it. You can, but the goal. On defense, your goal is to stop. Just stop. Okay. Especially specifically playing the line, your goal for the most part is always going to be stop that big man in front of you. Okay. Because people's 300 pounds. Stop okay. him. So you running and you got to push, you doing whatever, you making contact. You, your job is don't get in there. Okay. Just do not get in. So what do you see, before we get back to the music, where do you see yourself going when you do pursue your degree in sports management? Sports I, management. I personally, I do love to get into like like any of these sports teams out here. Not even out here specifically, but anywhere. Like a sports team, any sports team, any sports team that need me, sign me. Sign him. I know I don't do it well. I'm not asking, but <laughs> coach. It's like coaching. Nah, yeah. like, I know there's like so many different positions that you could really do to be in like the sports field. Even when you go through the background checks, like there's mm -hmm. so much stuff that you can do behind the scenes. You're not gonna be seen with just the wrong recognition. Right. I, I just want to spot. <laughs> And I think that's beautiful. Definitely continue to go for it. And I would definitely say, do you think that that would be something that takes up the maturity of what it is that you want to do in life? Do you feel like right now music is a hobby to you? And and then after that, we could take it back to the question of like, what do you feel like you want to contribute to music? That's a good question. In the following years. That's a really good question. <laughs> I feel like right now, um, I'm not really focused on too many things right now, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I'm mm -hmm. trying to more or less keep my grades up because mm -hmm. I, I, like, I keep most of my focus on one thing to make sure it's done, if okay. that makes sense. Exactly. I stay on the track somehow. 
Mm-hmm. So right now, I'm pretty much focusing on getting my schoolwork done. Okay. But once I'm done with my school, after I'm done with classes and stuff, if there was a studio out here, I'd be in there. Mm-hmm. Literally, I'd be. I'd, studio coming soon. Yeah, that's lit. Come on, me. Nah, but after um after I'm done with my classes, I'm on my computer. I'm looking through, depending on what type of beat I'm doing, I'll look for a loop or mm-hmm. I'll get down and use my my computer as my keyboard, so, so I can get chords on it. And perfect. So what type of like engineer would you say you are? Like when you do engineers like creating the beats and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So when you create beats, what is like your I guess your sound that you go for? Like do you go for? Because I know now when you look up for beats and stuff. At least when I look for beats or when producers and stuff who send me beats, I feel like they're a lot of them are starting to wrap their beats around um, some type of drill essence. And yeah. there's like this essence of like even if they're trying to create like a beat that doesn't necessarily follow the whole drill trend there's like this essence of drill within it mean. and i feel like it's a a, a multiple yeah, of producers and engineers that do. so how do you feel like your sound is personally speaking i feel like when i'm looking when i'm making beats when i'm looking for beats because i song right so when i'm looking for beats and i'm looking for stuff for people i'm it's more of a what do they do mm-hmm. something that makes it easier for them because i don't want to I don't want to do something now. You can't do that. And now you're looking at me like I, I paid you, whatever, whatever the case may be, and I I can't do that. I don't want no one to do that. I don't want no one to feel that way. So I always try to listen. I do my research and I listen, see what's going on. So depending on who I'm working with, I'll change it up. But when I'm at home, I do a lot of drill beats. Uh, it's not necessarily Bronx drill, but mm-hmm. it's a lot of drill. A lot of drill. And I think that's that's necessarily. Do you think it's necessarily because of like? my career that's really that's like that's, that's what the that's around you yeah. so that's pretty much like your yeah because i know i if i do it if i stay on the bronx slash jersey club drill scene mm-hmm. thing because a lot of bronx drills turn into jersey club right now right so a lot of that i, have, I just made something last week for, for draco literally for right. draco that's really my what do you um, what do you put your do you like upload your beats on like a certain website or like youtube nah, or anything right now, not no more. okay i started so when I started out a couple of years ago with my father, I, we, he he signed he was signed to Sony, so wow. as a label, as a as a record artist, he was signed. We had our own. Did he do rapping as well? He was a rapper. Yeah. Okay. We had he was on he was opening for tours and people for wow. opening tours for people. But shout out to the dad. Nah, yeah, guys. R.P. Masa, you feel me? R.P. Gang, that's feeling that's my heart. Mm-hmm. But he he really put me on the list. He wow. had me. He did everything. Everything. We mm-hmm. had a desktop in our house. He did everything for his own beats. He was mixing, mastering, making beats. Sometimes he finds it on YouTube, but a lot of times he was making his own beats, sitting there. That's one thing they'll tell you when you engineer a lot mm-hmm. and producing. When you making beats, you'll sit in the studio or in your house listening to the same thing three three hundred times, trying to find out times. what's right, just trying to figure out if it's right or not. You might have a note placing a a thirty second of a note off. Mm-hmm. And it'll throw off the sound as in the mix and you like what is wrong. So now you're trying to go through it. And it's a lot of trial and error. And you know what also is kind of a little difficult, especially when listening to musical beats or anything. I just feel like when you listen to something so much, you really have to take a break and give yourself a yeah. day or two and really like revisit it to catch something else. Because I feel like when you're just listening for stuff or listening for mistakes, so to say, like imperfections or whatever, like for some reason, it's it clouded after Yeah, it skips over your ear after a while and it's like you have to revisit it to catch it i've been no, like i've noticed it's a that. scientific it's a scientific term for it i just can't remember i've seen it like Shit. i, I seen it on tiktok at one point and it was just <laughs> talking i'm like i I'm go like, through that a lot i'm like yeah. and you know what's so crazy that's why i love talking to like people who do art or different type of artists because it's a certain type of mindset or like a way that the mind works yeah. in someone who's in the art and i feel like a lot of artists could like see and i feel like a lot of artists um, they're very visual, visual learners, um, and they really love like a um, visual experience yeah. or hands-on experience. And I think um, it, I like those type of people versus the people who are so like, if I had to switch the terms, like too reality based. Because mm-hmm. I feel like me, I do music, but I'm like I'm very down to earth. Down to earth, I, I appreciate the compliment. No, I'm very down to earth, but I feel like I could be in like, I want to say La La Land sometimes. So like in my own world, because I feel like I have to kind of be a little 
um, delusional or like a fairy tale world in order to kind of like get my ideas, get my creativity. So I feel like people who are like very realistic, um, it's really hard to connect with them because I'm like, damn, like you're very like you don't got no dreams, yo. you don't got no aspirations. And it's not even necessarily have any dreams or anything because they they will. It's just they're too rough. Like they be trying to talk to you like like you're a soldier or some shit. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, it's like I'm not a soldier. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like that's that's really what that I feel like that's part of your character growing up. That's yeah. what you're around. If you're around people that are rugged gang not well, yeah, right. Not necessarily gang members, but people that are a little rugged, people that got really or like that, tough. When you're around that, that's what's gonna you're gonna build to be around mm-hmm. you because that's just But you know, I feel like I was I feel like I was around a lot of like definitely like rough hood people. Like I feel like a lot of my family was like very um was definitely into the streets, very hood and all these things. But I don't necessarily think and I think this is just because I stuck to like my personal character and everything. Um but I necess- I would say I picked up a lot of the characteristics or the traits, but I kind of put that, I'm not gonna say behind me, but I, I installed it inside myself where it's there, but I don't present it. But it, exactly it comes out mean. when I the time is mean. needed. Yep. <laughs> I feel like for them, it's the time is needed all the time. Yeah. Of course, because you're in the city, city. You're in a, you're mm-hmm. so much going on that once you have to be able to, I, I get what you mean, because that's, yeah. And it's crazy, so it's like, you know, I necessarily like to talk to people who do artists, because even like an artist who's very in like a realistic world, right, so to say, like, when it's time for them to get creative or into a creative space, like it's really beautiful to see like how they create the two. But <laughs> um do you feel like you have anything that or fun facts that you want to share with the audience about mm, necessary like who you are that you would say people necessarily don't know about you or would get like a misunderstanding of like who you are, like just like a fun fact. Out here specifically in Alfred, since mm-hmm. I've came out here, I've realized that because I'm from the city, I had a wrestling bitch face. Everyone's told me that. Mm-hmm. I ain't know. I ain't really know. I thought it was just shout out to the man. wrestling team, wrestling bitch face. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a thing for real until I got mm-hmm. out here. People was like, I don't be wanting to come up. Someone, someone literally said to me. I don't be wanting to approach you sometimes because I feel like you want to spaz on me, you want to scream or something. And I'd be like, you know me. I, I'm me. <laughs> but I feel like it just comes with that. It comes with that New York demeanor. Yeah, that's what though. it is. I feel like it's the New York demeanor. Like, I feel like everybody, like a good amount of people from New York, like you don't really have that, you know what I'm saying? Like, nice, oh, yeah, my like, face to nice, to come talk to me yeah. too. Like, no, like, uh, our faces are very stern, eyebrows are low, like, you know what I'm saying? Eyes scrunch yep. sometimes have that, like, really dominant presence and demeanor, which can be intimidating to a lot of people. It is. To but a it's lot. crazy to see that a lot of people also from New York get intimidated by that type of demeaning, demeanor due to the fact they, that they are from New York. So mm-hmm. I've also noticed that here being an Alfred. I feel like the thing about people from, from New York being intimidated, I mm-hmm. feel like that stems from because you're from the city, you you tend to you can tell what's going on with somebody mm-hmm. by reading their face mm-hmm. because that's how quick the city is. You have to be able to read someone's face. Off red, body language. That's how that's how you get through in the city. That's really how you get by. Mm-hmm. I feel like because you're out here, when you walking around, you see someone else do that. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. all right, you're from the city too. But then it becomes a why are you moving like that? Why are you looking at me like it's a it's a little balance that gets thrown off sometimes. Right. All it takes, especially once you know that someone's from the city, all it takes is someone staring at you. And you're automatic. Why staring at you? And, and, and now you want to fight. Yeah. And my thing is, okay, so how do you feel like you move necessarily in the city versus how you move up to in Alfred? In the city, uh, because of <laughs> because of where I live, mm-hmm. I don't tend to... I may have one AirPod and I don't really have both. I'm Same. not really... I don't take it's that, that hush shit. It's, it's that hush shit. It's you really can. instincts. It's street smarts. I'm not taking no chances be because, like you said earlier, when we were talking now, it's something could happen in literally two seconds. You could look one way, look back, and now someone's doing whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't want no parts of it. I'm trying to make sure I get home. I yeah. people, I got a life. <laughs> I have people that care about I'm trying to make sure I get home. So when I'm at home, I don't be listening to music on blast. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to it off AirPods and that much unless I'm in a spot where I can see everything. 
back, where I'm in like a per se train that you in the the back of the cars, the back of the old school cars now, because it's newer now. But if you sit right in the back, right before you pull the doors open, you can see everything that goes on through the train. Mm-hmm. So you can know. I feel like that's one thing I learned, but it's another way to stay alert. Man, right. I do that everywhere I go in the city. When I come out here, I lose like half of it mm-hmm. because I realize that out here it's so much calmer. No one's gonna, no one's coming. No, it's not the same level of intensity that you have to be prepared for out here. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's intense at times, but it's a different level mm-hmm. because of in the city is it's different things that you can have that you can't have compared to coming upstate because it's different rules, different laws. Right. So it's a whole different ball game. I come out here and I'm calm. Like you I'm don't really gotta city. look over your shoulders too much. I'm in the city. I'm, mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta pay attention. Of, so, block. what would you say, like, your most, if you do feel comfortable to share, what would you say your most intense moment um, or a crazy moment that you've seen being in the city that just had you, like, damn. In the city? Yeah, like, that just kept you, like, damn. Like, my worst moment. My most intense moment that I could think of was top of my head. Mm-hmm. I, um, I was working. If you, if you guys are from the city, where I play land is basically like Six Flags. Mm-hmm. Everyone grow up going the same way you grow up going to the Bronx. You every Wednesday in, in school, you go to the Bronx. You go to you go to the playland every mm-hmm. summer in June, right in the end of the school year. Right. So I've worked there. I've worked there last summer. I'm supposed to working there this summer too. That's the spot where a lot a lot can go wrong at once. Mm-hmm. So I've realized like stay off it. Stay, stay on point at what time when I'm over there. Because mm-hmm. upstate, technically speaking, it's upstate. It's 20 minutes upstate. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's still a city thing. Everybody's right. on the city. So I've learned that when I'm on that way back, you got to really pay attention. I was coming home one day. Like, I've always known, like, it's really crackheads and stuff out in the city. Mm-hmm. But I ain't really have too close of encounters. Yeah. I've always kept my distance. Mm-hmm. I'm walking, I'm coming home, I'm on, if y'all know, Fordham is, Fordham is a big shopping plaza. Everyone, everyone goes to Fordham. Everyone goes to Fordham. I had Fordham. a spot in the Bronx. <laughs> everyone goes to Fordham. If y'all know what Fordham is, you're not really, you're, you're not really from the like, <laughs> So, basically, I'm walking, I'm waiting for the bus. It's like 2 in the morning, I'm waiting for the bus, it's got a full metro north. I'm sitting there, it's like some guy leaning straight, straight, leaning over like a 90 degree angle almost. Yeah, like, oh my God, almost he's too like, some shit, yeah. And I'm looking, I'm like, damn, like that's someone's life for like when you think about it, like that's someone's life. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a real person. And you know, real sometimes person. you don't think about that, you get into the uh that's a crack that's not that's too bad. But when you think about it, it's, it's a whole person. That's really it's sad to see someone go that's through something like that. And it's like I'm sort of a my mom is an empath empath. So she feels people's mom's a life coach. She does all that. She mm-hmm. feels people. She's always talking about feelings. So I've understood my feelings, but I've, it's still rocky. Mm-hmm. So when I see stuff like like, I feel for them, like, and then I've also been told a couple times by my mom like, when you walking around people, their personality, their burdens can mm-hmm. jump onto you okay. per se. So you can be walking and chilling, whatever. Next thing you know, you will pass on now your day's gone. Day's mm-hmm. horrible just because they got negative energy following us. Shout out to mom for the beautiful life to I just love uh, I feel like simply you, beautiful on everything. Come on, I, tap yeah, I feel like you I definitely do feel like, you know, those type of conversations and talks are needed as you're growing up in general because it, it keeps you aware. Um and I just feel like if a lot of people heard words like that, they would really see a lot of things. A little bit differently. Little different, yeah. And I guess following up on that story, how do you feel like these experiences or like these encounters that you've had, good or bad, how do you feel like that shaped um, how you look at music? So, hey, that's a good question. <laughs> so I feel like specifically with Bronx Joe and stuff, mm-hmm. the, the music that you're listening to, I feel like, personally speaking, I always, I've always said this, it's all vibrational. Mm-hmm. Music is pure vibration, and that's why certain music makes you feel good in your heart, mm-hmm. and then certain music will make you want to go drive by or something, just anything, anything well, violent. The mood is, the mood is at the time. Like it's all vibration that comes from your heart. Mm-hmm. So I put myself, I try to put myself around positive stuff. Right. So even if I'm making a darker song or whatever, I still have something positive in it. Where I'm, y'all may not hear it, like to the normal person, normal just a listener may not hear it, but mm-hmm. I'm a producer. 
but I think people that really are in the art, they're gonna hear it. It's something to bring your spirits up in a way. Because mm-hmm. I feel like you shouldn't be traveling yourself with negative. I that agree. just it's not it's not a good thing for anybody. <laughs> I feel like it just keeps you in like a negative mindset and yeah. space. But you guys, we have come to a point where we will now be taking a quick short break and we'll when we return, we will be doing our lyric our lyric trivia question on Jay. So we'll see you right after the break. Hey you guys, welcome back from the break. And I actually had some time to get my lyric trivia questions or lyric trivia questions together to touch Jay with some um I wanna say mainstream <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely want to say some current mainstream artists and see if he, you know, could guess the song and see which song um, these lyrics are from. I'm trying to think, or I'm debating right now if I actually want to just say it in the, like, how it goes, or if I just want to talk the lyrics. But anyways, we're going to start with the first one. Are you ready? Do you feel like you're going to get them? Nah, you don't know? I don't know. Like, I feel like I nah, actually... I don't know. I might. I feel like I picked some 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 calm ones. Okay. So we're going to start with 2022. I'm coming through on some new shit. How we ask you see me and you ain't do shit. That's definitely Bonestro, but... It's not Bonestro. That's not... Who is that? What the fuck? Okay. 2022. I'm coming through with some new shit. How we ask you see me and you ain't do shit. That's, a, that's how the song goes? Like, how you said it? No, I'm talking. Oh, God, that's what I said. <laughs> that song from New York? He's, the, the artist is not from New York, no. But it was, he was featured with a New York artist from Queens. Queens? I don't know. <laughs> you go. I'm going to say one more time. You want to say? Okay, 2022, I'm coming through with some new shit. How we ask you see me and you and do shit. Uh, yeah, I, do, I don't know that one. You want to take it? Okay. So, it's actually from your favorite artist. It's Lil Baby. It's Lil Baby. <laughs> it was, we have a problem featuring Nicki Minaj. That's, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, that's what it was. <laughs> see, I, you I guys, I'm, I'm thinking like he was going to know this shit. I don't know. I guess I, I, guess I, I, guess I, I guess I did some good ones. Okay, so... Now we have another one. Okay, so this is okay. I'm not even gonna say too much. The new Spectra. We don't feel potholes. Dorito bitches mad that they not chose. Whoever that is got good wordplay. <laughs> is that you? No, it's not me. <laughs> that sounds something you say. That's not me. That's not me. But I appreciate that. The new spectra. We don't feel potholes. Dorito bitches mad that they nachos. The new the spectra. E- yes. Uh, the way you said it, I heard it. Yeah, I, I'm it like, sound like the way the Dorito <laughs> and into the Dorito yeah. bitches mad that they nachos. Check them out, bro. Shout out the queen. I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was actually from Nicki Minaj. Where we sleep. See, I don't know. Um, I don't know the chorus to that song. <laughs> okay, so now. Let's see if you get this one. You might get it. I don't know. Brand new, brand new Lamborghini. Fuck a cop car. Piss it on my head. (laughs) Brand new Lamborghini. Fuck a cop car. Piss it on my head like I'm the rock. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But what's the song? It's uh, it's the baby with um, the baby. You don't have to. You don't have to remember the the feature. Just you have to say the name to get it. To be honest, I didn't let you say the name for the other one. So the baby was right. It's the baby rock star. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so the other one. (laughs) I wonder if you're actually gonna get this. Okay, I'm thick because I be eating O's. Nice place. Bitches can't take nothing from me but no. (laughs) Um, okay, so I'm gonna come up with one on the spot. Because I just feel like I want another one. Like, what songs could I think about? Um, going into my brain of memory. Do 
And you know what? I think that's where we're going to wrap it up at. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because, because nothing, is, nothing is coming. So, you guys, that was my lyric. That was our lyric trivia question. And we will be doing this with more artists. And the lyrics will only get more better, like way better and funnier. Um, you actually did pretty good. I didn't think you were going to get a lot of these, um, with a little help, of course. Yeah, yeah, um, and thank you that. for saying such a great compliment <laughs> when I said the Queen's lyrics and saying mine. But, okay, so, I guess the next, um, the next sector of this, um, I want to say interview, <laughs> podcast that we're going to get into is pretty much just, to, um, end it off, like, how are you feeling, I guess, with life mentally? Like, we're going to take this moment to just do, like, a quick check-in, see how you're feeling, how are you feeling mentally, how are you feeling like life is going, how do you feel like life is treating you? Let's just start with one question because I'm saying a bunch of shit. How are you feeling? So great. You're feeling great. Yeah, great. And overall mental? Well, it's, it's always room for improvement, but mm-hmm. I'm solid right now. Yeah. How are you? Um, I feel like I'm doing amazing. I feel like, you know, why not in my life? Um, same thing. Room for improvement. I'm growing. Not being too hard on myself. Um, learning how to appreciate life. And I think it's going pretty good. So, how do you feel like, like, how old are you, by the way? Well, I'm 18. I turned 18. Oh my gosh, you guys. We went through this whole podcast. <laughs> I didn't even ask how old he was. Uh, I turned 19 next month. 19 next month. Yeah, Taurus. Taurus, yeah. You know what's crazy? I don't come into contact with Taurus's. I feel like. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't I don't really know the vibes, but you know what? I do look at like my um, friendship charts or my, like, I'm supposedly supposed to be cool with Taurus, um, but I don't come in contact with them. Like, what is like a Taurus vibe like? Are you into like astrology, so to say? I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not on some, I know every date for whatever. Right. I'm not that far, but I know for my sign, I know mainly, I just really stay in for my sign. Mm-hmm. I was growing up, I feel like everyone was starting to grow up on astrology. Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, I might as well stay up and to date people. Might as well know mm-hmm. my own stuff. Because mm-hmm. I was getting asked, what are you? I'm like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Searching it up. So I started to deep into that, dig into that a little bit. So what's the deepest? Like, you know what's your, like, your rising sun, moon, uh-huh. and- I just, oh, I've just, done that research. Okay. I can't say off the top of my head, though. Okay, so what would you say, like, uh, Taurus, I, like, characteristic is? Because I'm a Pisces. Stubborn. Well, yeah, I'll tell you that. Yeah, stubborn. Instantly, stubborn. Most mm-hmm. stubborn people you can get, but at the same time, we're stubborn because we want, want it done a certain way, or mm-hmm. everything, whatever it is, it's, so we, it's like a structure to how we do stuff. I think. Mm-hmm. We, we want what's the best. The best way we wanted to see how exactly how it came out in our brain, mm-hmm. that's how I want to see it. So, so how does that play out in the real world? As like your, I guess like your characteristic. How does that reflect like with people like when they in, when, encounter you? Like, like I said earlier, when people come up to me a lot of times, that rest of bitch face and mm-hmm. gets to them, but it really just takes a little conversation. You really say hi, I smile. How you doing? I'm I'm a really friendly person. Right, I'm, I don't I'm not I'm not a pure dickhead. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say what's hot. How you doing? I'm gonna ask you a bunch of things over that. But I feel like a lot of people they look past it because they see the rest of the bitch face. That mm-hmm. automatically it's a characteristic and just hits everyone. So you know how like okay so like you know how like signs have you know the cons and like the benefits. So I guess if being stubborn is one of your characteristics for so I don't know if that would be considered like a positive or negative for you, depending on what lens you decide to view it from. Yeah, it but what way. would you say a benefit of being like a Taurus is? I'm not scared to talk to people. I'm not scared to talk to people. I'm not scared to market myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not scared to fail. That's okay. why I'm not. I'm never. I'm, I'm ambitious. I feel like that's that's really. I'm ambitious about what I do. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. I want everything done best way possible. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm never gonna just it's some mediocre i'm not gonna put out something mediocre because i feel like that's a bad representation of myself mm-hmm. it's like you should never do that you always put out your best because you're not always watching them beats on youtube that got 10 views sometimes those record label views 
maybe the CEOs and directors may be reviewing it. You don't never know. Mm. So I feel like you shouldn't, you should never put out nothing bad. Mm. Always, whatever you make sure you're confident in what you put out, mm. and when you're confident in what you put out, then it it helps you in a way. Mm. It just progresses if that makes sense. So do you feel like you're gonna have like? Well, before we get into that, um, no, we can actually get into it. So when it comes to social media presence, because I know I do have you on Instagram and stuff like that. I don't necessarily nah. see you have <laughs> pictures or anything like that. Like, how nah. are you? Are you looking at like rebranding? Like, are you looking so, like how to like put yourself out there? Like social media, like a social media, like your thing, like so. All right, so basically, what the reason why I don't post right now, at least mm-hmm. probably like a week or two before mm-hmm. I met you, I think that's when I stopped posting on my page. Mm-hmm. But I be on my, I have a backup page. I have, like, I'm always on there for the most part. But mm-hmm. I um, I don't post on my main right now. I had a quote in my in my thing. It's like mm-hmm. release them. They they can't reach you, mm-hmm. and it's all about freeing yourself and. Oh, wow. Separ- elevation requires separation. Mm-hmm. That's my motto. That's my go-to motto. So elevation that. requires separation because if you don't elevation separate yourself, separation. you're not going to separate yourself from the mix. You're going to be stuck with the mix. Mm-hmm. The people you surround yourself with are who you turn out to be. I've At some point, in, and you know what's so crazy? When I was a, a little old thing, a little young man, <laughs> um, I feel like my uncles and my, my aunts and my mom, they always used to say, like, you are the company you keep. Mm-hmm. And I always used to be like, well, I'm not that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that. always, I'm, I'm just a supporter. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm just like a supporter of them. Like, but as the time progresses, like, you literally become the people that yep. you really are around. And regardless if that's like, you take, regardless if you're not becoming them as a whole, like, you're taking, you're taking pieces of them. And it's things. like, it diminishes, like, who you truly are as a person. So I definitely agree. Like, um, repeat your quote again. Elevation requires separation. Elevation yes. requires separation. Like you definitely need to be isolated. You definitely need to be alone to really regain um, your own energy. Get back in touch with who the hell you are as a person. And you know, I'm not gonna say stay away from like friend groups and stuff like that. But definitely, as you continue to grow older, be you know, a little bit more are. cautious. I feel like if you know who you are and you stay yeah. true to yourself, as long as you stay true to yourself, I really feel like that's you good. Staying true to yourself because. If you don't stay true to yourself, when you want to mix, fit in with the crowds, it, like you said, it's diminishing. Mm-hmm. So now you're you're walking around. You got the characteristic of old girl from down the block. You don't even know. You don't even know because that's you. you but you know what's so know. crazy? Other people realize it. Like no, other people not. see those things, but it's like you can't see, which is, I just find that to be like the crazy part. And also, I feel like, honestly, if you're not a person that is, and I'm not going to say not so find a fan, friend group or be in a friend group but if you're not in tune with who you are as in like your whole ideal or you know image yeah. um try to stay away from friend groups because what i've learned especially in my past of like having friend groups and stuff and not necessarily being uh truly in my own character you know character for my own energy i noticed that when i went into friend groups like especially after like it's because i'm a pisces it's I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like for me, because I'm a Pisces four to time, I have this thing where it's like I kind of blend into like whatever the energy is in the room. And so, for example, if the energy is very feisty, furious and stuff, like that's what I'm going to be on. Like if the energy is very sad, and uh, that's what I'm going to be on. And I noticed that it it took me to have to find like a strong, you know, foundation of like who I am to be able to keep my own presence within a friend group or like around my friends and not necessarily change or be like, oh my God, like of course I could like how somebody do something or talk or speak on certain slogans, but me learning how not to take certain things from them and like, you know, let that be them and me be me, right? And so I feel like, Especially what I see now, like with people like growing into themselves and growing up, and definitely even when I see on campus, like um, a lot of people are kind of blending in. And I feel like, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but I feel like. Because, you know, they're finding themselves. There's a time and place. There's a time and place. And it's like, when are you going to let someone see you? You know, like, when are you going to let somebody see who you are? And it's like, you know, and so it's just, a lot of the times it could just be a little bit. It could be a little bit sad because it's like, I'm not going to say sad. I don't want to say sad because I, I don't want it to be 
a thing that sounds, you know, yeah. bad. Because it's not. It's not it, bad. Of course, it's a part of your journey. It's about you finding yourself. However, always know that, you know, let people know who you are as well. Because I feel like I walk around, I just kind of see, you know, girls, guys, like, just either, like, they have on, like, the same identity as in, like, the same fucking clothes, the same styles, like, the same talk, the same walk. I even see the same walk. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, the same walk yeah. is crazy to me. Like, I've always said that. Same talk is crazy. Not to cut you off. No, go ahead. I feel like, like, just like how you said about the being yourself having a strong foundation, I've always said, since I was a little younger, my mom's been instilling that in me mm-hmm. because of, she's a life coach. She talks. I've always realized that she's, like, Something she always said, I realized to go along with the whole whoever you hang around with, it's mm-hmm. your circle that you turn into that eventually. It's like, like how you said with friend groups, I really feel like you shouldn't really have a friend group when you're finding yourself. You sure? When you're finding yourself, I feel like that's self healing. You should be on your on your grind by yourself. You shouldn't be trying to. Not necessarily you shouldn't be going partying, but you should be. Not necessarily you can't have friends like that, but it's a balance. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you when you find yourself really, that's when you could really step into a presence and you could step into a room, you light it up. Or now it's just because you found yourself, your 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 energy that gives off your aura mm-hmm. is automatically going to be better. So not better, but it's more appealing. If that makes sense. You know? No, that does make sense. And I guess we could go into the conversation like back and forth about like how do you feel like your presence and like your friend group, like do you have friend groups that start there? Like so, a friend group. <laughs> so out here, basically, I came out here with a friend group. Uh, my friends from back home. I had a friend. That's my. It was my old friend group from school. A lot of weird stuff happened when we separated. As we all went on our separate paths, it got really weird. Mm-hmm. And then I just after the point, I don't. I'm. I'm working on myself. I don't want to be dealing with. I got people calling me, on calling me to ask me for a favor. Right. So. What are, you, what are you doing for me? If I'm doing this, for, I'm and I'm that same person. I don't really count favors. I do whatever. If I got it, you got it. That's mm-hmm. just how it's supposed to be. People don't see it that way sometimes. And when you really put your all into people and you really a genuine person, it sucks that Shout you have to, to cut people, people out of your life. And that, I seen the post that it was like, you. everyone talks about cutting people off for the better. No mm-hmm. one talks about the pain and suffering that you have to deal with behind the scenes exactly. because you cut those people out. Those people I've known in my whole life. Those are my like <laughs> it's my brothers and I still love it's just we're not on that same path. I'm, separation elevation requires separation. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes you gotta separate yourself and that's really just coming into life. Mm-hmm. So now out here, I came last semester, I did horrible. I got academically dismissed. Mm-hmm. Did horrible. Came back out here this semester with a whole different no, I mean, none of them came in here with my the girl I was in. Them, mm-hmm. that's my that's really my friend. Was like, but that's not friends. Mm-hmm. That's really like family. Like that's my sister. Everything. So it's not really a friend group, but it's a friend. Mm-hmm. We keep each other balanced, and I feel like because we're able to keep each other balanced, it's not as bad. And I love that. Like I I I, I love the friends that can keep you on track, and you and also. And we should have fun. Yeah. And have fun. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's nowadays, I don't know, like, because I could definitely agree with you. Like, it's hard to, no one necessarily talks about when you have to let go of people. And a lot of times you don't want to, but it's like when you have to, like, I feel like that's when it hurts the most because it's just like, it's either them or it's my future. And I think what a lot of people fail to understand is just like, when it comes down to it, like, I feel like we've grown up in an environment where you see where bad decisions and choices lead you. And so it's like, I'll be damned if I put myself in a situation to where, regardless if it's going to affect me long term or short term, it's going to, like, it'll have an effect on me. And I don't have time to worry about if something's going to have a negative effect on me or not. The thing is, it's like a lot of people, when they just want and want from you, it just becomes draining. draining. It's draining to you, it's draining to your energy. It's right into what you have going on. And so what I also notice is just like even the commentaries that they could say. Like I've, I know like I've had friends that I've known from like childhood that would just say certain comments to me and the shit would just linger in my head for so long. And it's like it would irritate me or like when they do hit me up 
and say we're like we're not even in that type of space anymore like if the commentary was bad or not like that commentary will come to my head and just mess with my mental so yeah. it's just like it's stuff like that i pay attention to and it's not necessarily say i want friends that are not gonna have any like cause me any issues or anything like that because you know everyone that's, has that's issues what happens, yeah, so but I don't need you to always like when I feel like it's coming to a point where like now you're really just affecting my peace. Like that's, that's what you have to. That's go. how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Once like, it gets to that point, you just gotta let go. You just gotta go, and it becomes doesn't really matter what it is. Doesn't matter how your heart feels because your brain's been suffering. Exactly. That's how I always said. The reason why you feel guilt, the reason why you feel like, damn, I don't want to do this is because your heart is telling you those people that you've been with this whole time, you're not. Why would you cut these people out your life? Mm-hmm. But your brain is saying and telling you, it's, it's you, gotta, you, gotta progress. It. you gotta progress. You're trying to stay around these same people. They're not helping you. People are draining you. And so once you realize people, when you realize, when you pick people out, mm-hmm. like out of friend groups and stuff, that you can tell that, when you look at someone's energy, because mm-hmm. like I said earlier, when you walk, when you walk into a room, you got a confidence level. Mm-hmm. You're always gonna be able to see it, no matter who it is. I feel like when you really pick out who it is, it changes you. Mm-hmm. But once you hit that little little curve dip it, mm-hmm. it's up there. That's all I it's always up there for me. I'm yeah. always stay positive because you look negative, you, you think negative, negative things start to happen. That's it's right. intuition, it's 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 just how life works out there. And I think that's why a lot of the times it's like I feel like a lot of the times it's good to definitely operate in an emotional intelligence type of way. But the thing and especially um going off of what you were saying about being genuine, I feel like a lot of genuine people operate off their heart and yeah. their emotions. I'm definitely one of those people. And it's like, you know, a lot of the times that shit can like also lead you into, you know, bad places. And so like you were saying, like definitely listening to your brain can tell you when to like snap out of it. Like, you know, this is what you need, like actually just seeing things for what it is and not thinking about the history, not thinking about, um, you know, how long you guys know each other, what, what's been done. Like, I'm now just getting to the point in my life where I'm starting to understand that I'm always grateful for the help that people give me, but that doesn't necessarily give them the right to feel like they can treat me in any type of way because they've yeah. give, given me that help. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to feel like you can talk to me anyway. You can like, in a sense, like if we're from the city, you son of me, or yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Because you you gave me that help. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it and I thank you, but that's the most that I can do. And then I can give you opportunities and all that, you know, when the time comes. But when it comes to like, you know, you feeling like you can move with me a certain type of way or like, like you could just do anything, like that's where you have to cut it off. And I feel like that's just something I've been like, personally, I feel like when you starting off, when you not even necessarily music, but when you starting off and you making a name for yourself, you whatever you're doing, content creating, talking to people, being a therapist, whatever you're doing, as you start to build for yourself and people start to know who you are, mm-hmm. I feel like that's when it's the most important to know who your circle is. Yes. Because at that point, whoever's behind you, they might be trying to back door you this whole time. And you're not gonna know because you're thinking with your heart per se. You thinking, it's my brother, he ain't never done nothing. Mm-hmm. All the time he's sitting here waiting, just waiting for a moment just to get you or whatever. Not even really get you, but anything, you mm-hmm. feel me? And it's like once you I feel like it stems from slightly jealousy. It does. But I feel like no one but they think it's supposed to be so fast. Everyone thinks it's a quick life. You blow up quick. You don't blow up quick. You put in years. A lot of people put in work. years of work just trying to get to and someone to know who want it. And you yeah, like <laughs> you ain't even put the work in you up. You know what I mean, but you're not a, you're not doing nothing. You're not helping for real. You're just mm-hmm. there. You feel me? I feel like when it's like that, it's not. It looks like you gotta cut away sometimes. Yeah. And I love that you. I love that you said that when you're building, when you're building the name for yourself, it's it's that's the most vital like most vital important. part yes. about keeping like knowing who you're keeping around you because I've also come into situations where it's like you know there are people like you said like jealousy and you wouldn't even know and I think people have a yeah, very good jealous. poker face. Mm-hmm. on like and like how they move and operate so it's just like you know what i'm saying like that's why now uh, um because i know we don't really speak too much on campus or whatever but now i really operate in a way where it's like i don't really speak to people i don't really speak that's to people because i, I want to see how people are going to approach me move with me 
and how I operate. Like, for example, I already know, like, I don't, I barely, you guys, so <laughs> we go to school, of course, together. We, we have a few classes. Guys haven't realized that we have a few <laughs> classes. And I was, um, so it's like, I'm in the school and it's like, I don't really know too many people, right? But I feel like everyone knows me. No, uh, people, and so, people know who you are. Because I've had people come up to me asking who you are. And and so that's the thing. But it's like, and you know, it's never an issue. But it comes to where, like, the weird question starts coming. And, like, people get curious I about things. Mean. And it's I like, wait, mean. huh? Like, wait, how do you even know this? And then it's like, I don't have you on any social media and things like that. So it's like, who's sending out these information? So for me personally, as a person, as an individual who still has a regular life, still live a regular life, it's just like, Okay, like, do I have to be cautious about something? Do I have to, like, I feel senses. like I have to be on my I call guard? That, I call that hood senses. Hood I've always senses. called you, that hood senses. And you know me from the hood, so it's Literally, like, like you it's know really saying? You know how to operate. Yeah, yeah like, something you can tell. Like, a lot of times you won't be able to tell someone got their poker face on. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's people that's really been lying, even doing whatever for yeah, years. Like, you got to pay career attention. Good, and you're not going to know unless you really tap into someone's aura. But exactly, and I feel like it, it's, it's like one of those things where it's like, and it's so sad to say, <laughs> I, I do it here and there because I feel like you have to, but you got to really play stupid. You got to play oh, dumb. Yeah, I love, that's my favorite thing to do. I love doing that's that. That's my favorite thing. And you know what? I love doing it and you have to play dumb sometimes because it's like, I want to see how far a person is going to go, yeah. think they could go with me. I want to see what limits, what levels you could go because it's just like, you know, for some people, it's like you give them an inch, you give them, they want to take a fucking mile, yeah. right? And it's like, baby, I'll give you that inch, but the inch is all you will ever give because yeah. the mile, you will never even approach the doorstep to that because I just want to even see how you take the inch. So it's like, I want to see how pers- how far a person could go because now it's like, okay, I see what type of time you want. There's so many people that's just like, yeah, like it's just weird. Like, so do you feel like, and this is not a messy sex, no, no, but no, do you no. feel like, like you had like experiences like that? And especially, like, I know you're doing engineering and, like, you're yeah. soon coming to a point where it's, like, you want to start, you know, branding your name, building your name, you as a person. How do you feel like you take to socially interacting with people? So, I feel me, I don't even remember how we met, per se, but I know it was probably in class or something. I think so, it was, like, history class. Yeah, it was probably, you probably, I probably asked you a question or something. I'm yeah. not scared to talk to someone, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like if you're not scared to take a risk, you're not gonna get them you gotta take risks to do everything mm-hmm. feel me so when you're doing stuff i feel like if i'm not explaining like i've had those moments but i'm a background that's why i like producing that's why i like songwriting mm-hmm. i don't want to be that person that's in the spotlight all the time i hate the spotlight i like really? i've always said give me the money i don't mm-hmm. want i don't want to be like i genuinely don't want to be famous right i don't have no that doesn't bring me joy mm-hmm. what brings me joy is having money in my pocket Mm-hmm. Money to go take care of my family, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not stuck up on spot. I don't care about being a spot. That's why I song work. Right. I'll give. I'll do a song. Twenty minutes. Give it out. Mm-hmm. Who want it? Post some of it. Who want it? That's your shot. Because it's not. My time is come. My time is gonna come regardless. When you stay in a positive way and you stay in that hustling mode, can not stop you. No, they, they can try and fuck with you. They're not gonna really fuck with you though. I've realized that once you once you keep that really positive energy in yourself and you really walking around and you that nigga for real, like mm-hmm. this, but that's really how it is. Once you get to that level, it is what it is. Whatever right. happens, happens. You gotta keep whatever when you take an L, you can't look down. Mm-hmm. Keep your head up, keep your shoulders back, keep on going. Cause it's life. It's life's gonna knock you over. You gotta get back up. I love that you have so many like inspirational, encouraging words. Like, if you just had to look in the camera directly and just tell the audience, whether they be young, older, middle age, your our age, like, what do you feel like you would just want to say? That's like a, just a universal message for people. Like, for sure. <laughs> That's enough. For this. That's when I say this, I mean it like 100%. This is me being 100% honest with everybody. Invest in yourself. Don't be scared to to not be around someone because of whatever is going on. Don't be scared to distance yourself because you're trying to make yourself get better or whatever. Always put yourself first. Always invest in yourself. Because when you invest in yourself, that'll get you farther than investing in everyone else. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Which is, which leads back to the... 
this separation requires elevation. Let's go with the slogan. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's really my thing right now. Like, I love I'm, that. I stay on that all the time. I love that so much. I love that. I said that backwards. <laughs> no, you, you said it right. No, yeah. elevation. Yeah, elevation requires so I said that right. No, you said it right. Uh, in my head it sounded wrong. <laughs> well, the playback. If you didn't say it right, we said it right. Nah. <laughs> but no. Okay, you guys. So we're coming to a closing on the first. First, 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 first episode of the artist sit down. Yeah, give it up, give it up. Yes, give it up. Give it up to the whole stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone that's involved in the background, everyone, for real. Give it up to Carl. Carl. He is our editor, our Thank filmer. You. He set up all these beautiful lights. Thank you so much, Carl. You're amazing for even dedicating your time. Thank you to our artist Jay for being our special guest, giving us so many encouraging words and Honestly, I'm just looking forward for so many people to just come on this show and really just give words of encouragement, you know, have a really good conversation to get, you know, some things off their chest and really just say what you feel like you want to say, of course, while um, promoting a brand business um, or, of course, what the show is about, the artist is down, your music and your art. Um, so without further ado, I thank you all so much for tuning in to the very first episode of The Artist Sit Down. Until next time.